So we're taking a look at how to do state management in TypeScript and React. And we've taken a look at a couple of different mechanisms for that, including basic JavaScript out of React using use state and use context. Now we're going to take a look at using my old friend, MobX. And you can pretty much see right away as we get into this why this is my old friend. This is going to be so easy to use. So let's start off with our starter project. And I'm going to clone out the code. I'm going to go into my temporary directory. I'm going to get clone that URL and then create to do MobX. Nice to bring up VS code. Now I need to yarn this, but I also need to add MobX. So I'll do both at the same time. So there's MobX, which is the basic state system, and then MobX React, which is the bindings for React. While that's going on, let's take a look over at the store, which is primarily where we're going to be playing. We have the to-do, which is manages our to-do, is the type of our to-do. Got a bunch of little functions here that help us. We're actually going to remove a bunch of these. So just update and toggle, get gone, and then we're going to get rid of the exports on remove and add to do. We're going to hide those with our implementation. So, all right, looks like it's it's started up. That's great. Let me first uh, create a comment here. Mob X implementation. So the way that we create a store in Mob X is to create a class. What's going to be in our class? Well, a list of the to do's. And we'll start that off with an empty array. We'll call this store. And I'm going to create a new to do just type a string, also empty. And then in our constructor, we make the only concession that we need to make to uh, MobX, which is to make it auto observable. So I'm going to bring in make auto observable. That actually comes in up at the top from MobX. And then we just pass it this. And this is basically saying now, when it starts up, make any fields or member variables inside of store or whatever you have, auto observable, right? Okay, so now we need to go and create one. So let's create a new instance of the store and then export that. Wow. Okay, so what's good just before the first thing we need to do is add one. So I'm just going to make an add to do in here. And what it's going to do is it's first going to well, it's not first going to do this. It's going to set new to do to be an empty string. That's what we need to do at the end. But then before that, we need to go and add that to do. So I'm going to say this dot to do's equals add to do, which is our little handy helper function up here, which takes a list of to do's and then takes the new text. Well, that was easy. OK, so let's go over here to to do list, let's just start off with this one. This is fine. And we're going to bring in the store. And then down in here, we're just going to say that we want to look at the to do's. Wow, that's pretty easy. And I'll go and then also bring in the other thing that we need, which is to make this observable. So I'm going to import observable observer from MobX React. And now I want to wrap to do list items in that. So I'm just going to create a new value called to do list items observer. Observer, there we go. And give it to do list items. And then use that instead of to-do list items. Okay, cool. So this will be, we'll, now we'll be able to see if we can successfully add a new to-do. So let's go in and grab these two, go over to the to-do add, bring those two in. And first we need to wrap this in an observer. And then I'm going to start tracking that value. So the value here is store dot new to do easy peasy and then on change takes an event 
And then how does it set that value? <laughs> well, it sets that value as easy as just simply doing it. So new to do equals event dot target dot value. And I think this is what freaks people out when it comes to MobX is that it is so easy to set values. It's called bi-directional bindings. And what it means is I can just go and set a value and then I automatically update and anyone else that's looking at the value automatically updates as well. We're used to the flux pattern or the redux pattern of unidirectional data flow, meaning that we create actions, they go to a store, the store interprets those actions and then uh, updates the components that require that data change. This is much simpler. This is just simply you set the value and there it is. So our on click handler here is going to then call the store with add to do. All right, let's, uh, let's run this and see if it works. All right, let's go back over to our store and see what the problem is. Add to do, oh, we're bringing add to do in from the store. That's kind of weird. All right, I don't know why I did that. Okay, that's looking good. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and add to do. Hey, look at that. With we'll that, another one looking great. Okay, but I can't change any of these values. I can't delete anything. I can't change the checkbox. I can change the checkbox, but it's really not changing the underlying data. So let's go and get that fixed. So let's go back over into do list. And again, we'll use that two way data binding. So in the case of on click for the checkbox, we're just going to say to do dot done equals not to do done. Now we're going to get a little bit of an issue here because I've just put in this very simple uh, definition of a to do, but I'm just going to upgrade that to be the real to do. And that's going to give us our done. So there we go. Uh, voila. And then down here we can say on change takes that event, and then we're just going to set the text. Okay, easy. So now how do we remove something? Well, we need an on click handler. And in all honesty, we could do the filter right here to go and filter out that value. But let's just go over here and we'll go and down and use this remove to do create one called, uh, I guess, Sure, why not? Remove to do, it'll take an ID. It's a number, not a newber. And then we'll set the to do's with remove to do. And take out the ID. Okay, cool. Let's go back over here to remove to do. Give it the to do ID. Okay, let's give this a try. So we'll go and add a few. And now I can delete. Yep, and you can toggle. This is great. <laughs> Hard to get much easier than that. Okay, well, the next thing we need to do is we need to go and get this piece of JSON value. This is some JSON that has some uh, to-do items that we're gonna load, just so you can see how asynchronous behavior works in this model. And it's really, really, as, as you can imagine, as you've seen so far with MobX, this is very, very, very difficult stuff. So let's go and create an onload function that first does the fetch of that JSON. Then it takes the result and turns that back into a data structure from text. And from there, we get the data. And then we set the store's data. So to do's equals data. And we've already brought store in. That's good. Great. So now all I need to do is on click equals on load. And let's try this out. Wow. Okay. That was fast. <laughs> so we could, I guess, if you, if you think that this is really intense business logic, we could go and take this and copy it and put it into the MobX implementation. Let's do uh, load, which is a string, and then take the URL and just set this instead of store. And let's go back over here to our top bar 
And we'll just do uh, store.load. Don't need anything else. Nope, we're good to go. Let's give it another try. Yeah, works just fine. So you can also containerize all of your business logic in the MobX class. I gotta say, it's it's really simple. It's very type safe. Like, as, for example, like to do list, I can go back over here and I can see that, oops, look, does not exist. It's all standardized stuff. So really simple, very type safe, very clean. You can, if you want to, not allow this, this type of two-way data binding. If you want to run everything through actions, through methods, you can, it can support that model as well if this freaks you out too much. But if this doesn't and this works for you and this, this model works for you, then I think MobX is a great way to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about how to use MobX to create a simple to-do system like this. Let's talk about some pros and cons. So on the pro side, it is super easy to use, absolutely. It's also very popular and there's a huge ecosystem around it which makes it really friendly. On the technical side, I would say that it scales really well. And the reason that I say that is because it doesn't require a provider, which means that if you've got a couple of components on the page in different locations that need to talk together, it's really easy to string those together with a MobX Back, backing store, it's, it's very simple to do, and it means that it scales real well, you get multiple stores, that's totally fine. Surprisingly, it's also really fast. One of our viewers did a performance taste test with a bunch of different providers, as well as just using React natively, and it turned out to be the fastest among all of those, so that's really cool. All right, let's talk about some cons when it comes to MobX. It is heavy. It clocks in at about 73K, as I've shown it here. You can trim off about 10K of that using MobX React Lite. It also requires wrapping components, which may be something you're not willing to do and might make testing those components harder. It also suffers from a really bad name. I know that sounds crazy, but MobX just isn't a great name, and I think that maybe that turns a bunch of folks off. Vue actually has a very similar state management system in Vuex, and people don't have any reticence using that. It's pretty much got exactly the same API, but I think it's just got a better name. People are totally cool with it. I wanna hear from you though. What are your thoughts on MobX and using it like this? Be sure to put those in the comments section down below, or you can jump on our Discord server. There's a link to that in the description and just ask us any questions or give us any feedback or comments you have directly. In the meantime, of course, feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But from me to you, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.